a little bit of introduction. So I'm a uh, software engineer at ERT, and I'm really excited to show you what we have been working on for the past previous months. So just to indulge my uh, curiosity, could you please raise your hand who has ever used Apache Kafka in their development? OK. So we have a knowledgeable crowd. Um, and uh, could you please raise your hand if you have already tried out at least a bit of fast Kafka? OK. Great. Uh, today we'll possibly enlarge that number. Um, so Fast Kafka is a library that uh, will hopefully give you the ability to quickly develop, test, and document the applications for connecting to Kafka uh, topics. So let's start with our motivation why we did it. So we developed a churn prediction model, which does just that. It predicts. And we had to somehow deploy our model. And you, if you already haven't figured out from, from the name of the library, we are big fans of Fast API. And um, we wrapped our model in a simple get, and uh, Fast API does everything else for us. So it handles the message routing, it handles the input data, it uh, handles the output data. But there was a problem, so a customer came to us, and they said they have their data stored in Kafka topics. So we needed to find a way to connect uh, our model to Kafka. And we wanted to do something like this. Um, after some exploration, uh, there was no library that was able to do something as clean as this. So we decided that we need to have this ability to easily write code, to have uh, testability, to have automatic do documentation generation, and hopefully to have a high performance library. Uh, we didn't find anything that satisfied all those needs. So we used uh, Pydentic, and we built our decorates, de decorators on top of AIO Kafka. And to generate the documentation, we used ACK API. So Combining these three things mainly, uh, we've built Fast Kafka. So let's go through consuming. Um, so you can see we have developed something that looks quite like Fast API. So you create your application, and with the decorator consume, uh, you can con decorate your function, uh, which will consume from the input data topic and then decode the uh, input uh, messages that are arriving in JSON into, into Python class. So if for any reason you would like to use uh, any of the advanced options with uh, AI or Kafka, we have exposed them all in our uh, consume decorators. So if you want to do some uh, advanced things, uh, you can always override the underlying AO Kafka consumer. Then we got our first feedback. So people liked it, but they needed uh, some other uh, other support to test. So they didn't like the JSON, only JSON encoding and decoding. So we did just that. So right now, as a default, you have decoding of JSON formats, but if you want to use Avro, uh, you can always define that in the consume decorator. Also, you can pass a custom function that decodes uh, bytes, and it will inject the decoded message into your function. But that's a bit more advanced for now. So let's go in the same way through producing. So we wanted to uh, also have a producer's endpoint uh, and to look like this, so we implemented it. And uh, it does uh, quite simply, so the producers will do all the background work for you. It will connect this function to a topic, and it will decode the uh, prediction into a JSON. And uh, when you decorate your function with the Kafka app producers, as a side effect of calling these two predictions function, uh, the returned value will also be sent to uh, a Kafka topic. If you want to encode your messages in any other decoder, we support Avra's default, but you can always implement your own. 
Next big thing for us was we had uh, the data of customers split in parts, and we wanted to be sure that uh, all the data for one customer is contained in one particular partition. And uh, in Kafka, this is solved by using keys when producing messages to topics. So we did a simple uh, implementation. So if you want to use keys, you just wrap your return value into a Kafka event and uh, define the key that you want to use. Um, you can define any dynamic key you want. It just needs to be in bytes. Here it's my key, but uh, you can use uh, the score. You can use uh, anything from your message. So it's up to you. Um, next thing, we wanted to be able to test our app. So we've designed something like this. So you have a tester class uh, to which you pass your Kafka app. And the tester class uh, creates mirrors of consumers and producers. So where your Kafka app is uh, producing, the tester can consume, and uh, vice versa. So where your app can consume, the tester can produce. To check if uh, everything was sent, we also create uh, mockups that you can assert and check if you gained any uh, messages to your topics. Um, and lastly, uh, tester runs an instance of Kafka in background. Um, but our next uh, feedback was uh, that you really don't want to use real Kafka in uh, the background because the startup and the teardown of, of a real broker really takes much time and for each test, the tests would take enormously long to uh, reproduce. So. We took some time, and we've, we've implemented a fully, fully functional Kafka broker that is running in memory, and it has a fast setup and teardown. It's like under a second. It's instantaneous, and it reroutes your consumers and producers to this in-memory broker. And by using the tester as a async uh, context manager, you will get no side effects from the tests in between. So it doesn't work as it runs an instance of real Kafka, but it runs an in-memory Kafka mockup. But what if you want to use the real Kafka in your tests? So for some integration tests, or you really want to be sure that everything is working as it's supposed to. We didn't toss the code that we developed, but we've extended our testers, so you can use local Kafka, or you can use local uh, Red Panda brokers. Uh, to test your application if you're really sure that you're fine with long startup and teardown, but you want to be sure that it, uh, everything works completely fine. After that, when you have your application generated and uh, tested, you would possibly want to generate some documentation for it. So Fast Kafka comes with uh, a CLI, so when you install it, you get Fast Kafka docs command uh, with which you can generate and serve the documentation in uh, ACK API format. So to generate, we generate a YAML file which you can copy paste and use on the ACK API website. But if you want to, don't want to use that, you, when you serve the documentation, you get something like this. So you have your uh, subscription or consumers documented, so we are reading from input data. And also have the example, JSON example of what is uh, located and what the consumer will consume. Also, you have uh, your uh, producers uh, documented and you have examples of what they will possibly produce. Lastly, you have the title of your application and also a list of all the servers that you have defined that your application can connect to. If you want to uh, use uh, the GitHub Actions to quickly generate the uh, documentation of your application, we've prepared also a GitHub Action that will, uh, when, you, when you use it, generate the documentation, publish it on GitHub pages. Next thing, to use the application, we use uh, the fast Kafka run command. So, you, you pass the application or a application.py file that contains the Kafka app symbol. Um, and quite simply, uh, you just run this command and it should start up your, your application in another process. 
if you want to have some horizontal scaling, uh, you can define the number of workers. So this will uh, clone your application and run it in uh, the amount of threads that you want to run it. So this is something we are quite proud of. Uh, this enables us to quickly uh, increase the throughput of our application if they are written uh, correctly. Um, next thing, we want to see how fast our uh, application really is. So we've designed a app.benchmark uh, decorator, uh, which you can use and uh, you can decorate your application. It will uh, benchmark your, your uh, endpoints and uh, write out into the logs the quickness of your, your consuming and producing functions. So after doing some, some initial background uh, uh, benchmarks, we wanted to find out how much overhead we really put on, on uh, AI or Kafka. So this is the worst case performance penalty. We are not uh, using, we are not doing any advanced processing in the uh, consuming and producing functions. We are just encoding and decoding a simple JSON and AI or Kafka is uh, quite optimized. So anything we did uh, reduce it by 30%. But uh, in real life cases, if you would uh, do some, some computing inside your uh, uh, consuming and producing functions, uh, this would uh, quite quickly drop uh, to, to below 10 or possibly close to 0%. So some future steps uh, before that. Um, you can see that we are quite active on uh, GitHub, so it's five of us. And uh, you can see that we have, uh, on average, at least one pull request daily. And we are working on a two-week uh, release cycle. So every two weeks, uh, you will get a uh, minor, minor release that uh, almost definitely has some new, new uh, additions in the features, feature domain for, for our application. Um, what we plan to implement in the future months is we want to add transactional logic. So uh, at the moment, when you consume the message, you automatically uh, commit the offset that the message has been consumed. And if your application for any reason crashes, uh, that offset is already committed and um, you will lose that message. Um, but uh, we want to add the app.process uh, decorator which will uh, combine your consumers and producers and uh, if, you, if you don't get uh, the desired outcome of your function, so if it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't go uh, completely, uh, we won't commit the offsets and uh, you won't lose the messages. Next thing, we want to add support for other messaging protocols such as RabbitMQ. This has been uh, requested uh, some, some time from, from the Reddit users. And right now we are building on top of AI or Kafka, but we also want to support uh, libraries like Confluent or uh, uh, Python Kafka so that you can choose which one do you want to use. Um, and yeah, well, we want to do the performance improvements, so we are planning to possibly rewrite uh, our consumers and producers in Rust to, to uh, enhance the speed of our producing and consuming. And last but not least, uh, a lot of the features in the past few months uh, have come from the community feedback. Uh, at first, we did something that worked for us and implemented the features that we needed. But as you, as you saw with the Avro and the uh, startup and the teardown of the tester, um, what you request is uh, our command. So uh, we would really be happy to hear more from you and uh, to find out what can we do to, to make Fast Kafka work for you. What's important for us, uh, we are actively looking for collaborators. Um, so you, here you have a QR code which leads to our GitHub uh, page. Um, and if you would like to collaborate with us on uh, constructing uh, a better Fast Kafka application, 
uh, we will be delighted to hear from you. And also, uh, in the past few months, uh, when we did the release, we've uh, seen that we are quite star greedy. So we are checking our GitHub every day for, for new stars. So we would like, if, if you like our, our application, please star, and more, more importantly, comment and join the discussion of how to make Fast Kafka better. And also here you have, but you can find it also on our GitHub and, and in our documentation, you have a Discord link. So if you want to chat with us or, or uh, discuss collaboration, please contact us here. So uh, that's pretty much it, and I'm ready for questions. Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Yeah, so is there any possibility of disabling Pydantic uh, uh, Pydantic validation? validation to deserialize quickly? To deserialize quickly. Uh, at the moment, no. Uh, but yeah, it will be planned uh, soon. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do is uh, if you want to just uh, put out bytes and consume them and do any of your thing that you want to do, this is like planned in the next release. It's, it's not a big issue, but uh, yeah, the disabling of, of validation is, is quite a good idea. So this is something we will plan quite soon. At the moment, we, we don't have that option, but yeah. Any other questions here? Then I will start, oh, I'll start talking about like, so someone online asked, did you do a comparison with Faust? So we've heard about Faust, but uh, the uh, benchmark was, so our benchmark decorator was implemented uh, in the previous release, so last Friday. And uh, we did the benchmarking over the weekend, so we wanted to just be sure that we didn't completely ruin AR Kafka by, by our work, but we plan to do the benchmarks in the future. Okay, and also someone else asked, do you provide integration with Start SD or similar things? Um, with? Start SD. Mm, not the dialogue. Like for metrics monitoring this kind uh, of no, thing? No, yeah. not yet. Not yet, okay. And how up to date is the underlying Kafka client implementation? For example, AIO Kafka is based on Kafka Python, which hasn't had a release for two years. Uh, yeah, so we are uh, quite familiar with that issue. So uh, at first, well, one, one, of the, one of our needs was that the uh, library is uh, well maintained. And uh, it's uh, quite funny that we've built on a library that, it's, uh, th that is not quite well maintained. Uh, but uh, so we do have a plan to, to uh, re-implement our uh, consumers and producers. Uh, and to, to uh, disconnect, or disconnect ourselves f from uh, the AL Kafka. Um, we are using the latest version, but yeah, it has this, this uh, mentioned issue. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, our plan was to, to put it uh, uh, on, on its two feet uh, as soon as we can, so we needed to uh, use a, an existing library, but uh, the plan is to have everything in house. Uh, so that we are sure that everything is up to date. Okay. But we are aware about the issue of fast Kafka, uh, of uh, Python Kafka and uh, Kafka. Cool. <laughs> 
So also like someone also asked, can I run multiple in memory Kafka instances in parallel to parallelize the test? Um, well, uh, the in in memory uh, in memory broker is like simply a an class instance uh, object in Python, so you can most definitely run it in parallel. So multiple tests running in parallel don't have any effect on each other. This was one of the reasons why we did it, because if we start up and shut down multiple Kafkas and we need to handle the ports, it really is quite a mess. So the in-memory broker can be, can be run in parallel. OK, and last question. How did you achieve the speed improvements? I think this is um, oh. Yeah, so so the speed improvements weren't achieved. We're a bit uh, <laughs> a bit slower with the overhead, but uh, we plan to achieve speed improvements in the future. Okay. Yeah, I guess if there is that's it if no question come through anymore in is there any question from uh, offline participants? Do you also plan to support protobuf messages or just, just bytes as messages? And do I also get the key as a consumer? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, when you're consuming at this moment, you just get the message. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we, this is just because we are not passing into, into, into your function. We, in the background, we have the information about the key and the partition and everything else. So it's, it's more of an like two hour issue to, to just pass it into your function and then deploy it. So we need to add it into release. Uh, and uh, yeah, when we, when we get the uh, feedback that it's necessary, we are quite happy to do it quickly. So far, I've seen that uh, the messages are kind of independent in the way that they're processed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just about processing a message. What if we have a scenario where uh, we actually care about the order of the messages across multiple partitions or across even multiple topics? Is there any uh, thought about this in the future or currently? So as far as I know, if you care about the order of the messages, you need to have them in the, in the same partition. So you can solve it with a key. Uh, at the moment, the messages, like in this most simple form, the, the uh, functions uh, consume message by message. But like nothing is stopping you to have some, some global list or a dictionary or something that tracks all the messages that came in. So in, in its uh, nature, the consumes and produces function are just Python functions, and you can treat them as that. And then you put on the decorators and they just get called when the messages come in and they, they get uh, produced into topics. So, yeah. Um, any more questions here? Okay, it doesn't look like it. And someone asked you, what's your expectation for Pedantic 2.0? And yeah. Yeah, we are, at, uh, we are building on top of it. So we are quite happy to hear that it's going to be, I think they said 50 times faster. We'll see. But yeah, we are eagerly expecting it. OK. <laughs> so thank you so much for the very interesting talk. And we will end here. Please give him a loud applause.